All right, guys. How we doing? We are going live. Here comes Ryan. Guys, we are going live here. And I say we because I have a we today. And my we is Matthias. He's not very we. He's actually a very tall man. But uh, how's everyone doing? Let me know in the comments that uh, we're, we're seeing you and or rather that you're seeing me. You're hearing me. While you're, while you're hearing me, let's take a moment to enjoy this. Has everybody heard this? This is a demo song that was made by none other than Com Trues, an algorithm demo song made by Com Trues, which uses a whole lot of algorithm. So the algorithm stream has started. The algorithm sound demos have started. It's happening. We are off and running. How's everybody been? I hope everybody's been having a good, uh, oh, a good, a good March. We are approaching, you know, when we started live streaming and as we did last year, we started as a response to uh, COVID-19 lockdowns. We're approaching the one year anniversary of that, that era, which is kind of crazy. Um, my nephew's birthday happened right before the lockdown and uh, suddenly it's his birthday again, which is crazy. But that's not why I'm on stream to talk about my nephew's birthday. Uh, I'll schedule a separate live stream. We can all celebrate my nephew's birthday. But um, no, why are we here? We're here because... You may have seen, I hope you've seen, a new synth landed in the Reason Rack. It's our latest, dare I say, our greatest. I actually think that. When I, I wrote a tutorial and when I wrote the script, I had this whole paragraph in the beginning about how I thought it was the greatest thing we've done ever and I was all excited about it. And Matthias wisely advised me, like, don't, you, you, we can't say, you can't say that for us. You got to pull that out. So I, I pulled it out. But I can say it on the live stream because no one can stop me. I think it's the greatest synth we've done in so long. I'm so excited about Algorithm and having so much fun with it myself. And uh, so what we thought we would do is we would get on here and uh, really bring kind of the brains of the operation in to uh, show us kind of some advanced stuff. So if you have seen the tutorial that I put out last week, that will get you, if you know nothing or you just kind of want an overview, that will kind of get you up to speed on algorithm. And hopefully you've seen that because we're going to kind of, to a large degree, we're going to pick up where that left off today. We're not going to go through the basics of FM synthesis because then we wouldn't have time to get into the, like some of the, the cool stuff that is baked into algorithm and just some of the cool tricks you can do with FM in general. So Let's call that a prerequisite to some degree. You won't be lost. You'll be entertained if you haven't seen that one. You'll still be able to follow what we're doing probably, but um, we're not going to cover the same ground. So let's dig in. Let's talk algorithm. Let's bring in our guest. He is my favorite all-time stream guest because we've done so many of them together. Guys, let's welcome Matthias to the internet. Matthias, you've made it. Oh, You're back. Finally on the internet. Finally. <laughs> I know. I've been trying to get on it for so long. <laughs> Just can't find it. Well, the tricky part is you, you would have to Google, how do I get on the internet? And that now you're... Yeah, in a... and you can't Google it without the internet. Exactly. <laughs> oh, so... that's, it's dad joke level, and I'm not even dad, so I don't know what we're doing here. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm um, just looking at the comments here. Um, best demo song ever, Toby U. I agree. It's such oh, a it's really good, good, so good. Come true. Really Shout out to Stefan for... Um, sort of, you know, in his role as artist uh, liaison guy to uh, hook that one up. That's great. Uh, Matt says, oh, hi, Ryan. Oh, hi, Matt. How are you? <laughs> oh, so, hi, Matt. Um, yeah, we got, oh, there's some other, Est, I see this person, Esty. Esty was on the, uh, on, I think I did an onboarding live stream and Esty, I remember ah. that name there. Hi, Esty. So see anyway. A lot of people just saying my name. I'll take that as a really positive thing. <laughs> yeah. <exactly. laughs> I gotta oh, say your name. Oh, wait, I had to scroll down. Oh, there we shift. go. Not I was around. still scrolled way up. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Matthias. Oh, that's uh, Koichi. Hi, Koichi. Hi, Koichi. Oh, someone's trying out a nickname for you. Maddie. How do we like that? Maddie, should we go with that? We've tried many nicknames during the years. I'm okay with it. <laughs> okay. Um, so, welcome to uh, the algorithm live stream. Should we, uh, should we talk about algorithm? 
Yeah. That yeah, would make sense, it. wouldn't it? <laughs> I know, right? Mm. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited to get into this. How you have been working uh, on, and your team has been working on Algorithm now for several months, but how does it feel now to actually have Algorithm out in the world for everyone to actually sort of start getting a sense of? Because it's... Uh, it's, it's always, I think, I think it's my favorite thing probably of all things in the world <laughs> right. to release, you know, a new instrument or musical tune to people uh, to kind of see the music that comes out of it. Because sometimes what we do, it becomes really theoretical and we sit down and kind of discuss how a feature should be or something. And so you can kind of forget that in the end, a bunch of people are going to make fucking awesome tracks out of the thing we do. So, so I'm really happy that it's out. Right, right. It's um, it's been fun to see uh, people's reaction to it. You know, yeah. it's it's a different synth for us. Is that fair to say? It, it is and it isn't. I think. Uh, I mean, it it definitely has some Thor DNA in it on the way you think about having slots and you fill those slots up with things, and it has a bit of complex one with the routing, but it, it's definitely different. In I mean, it's the first time we're properly kind of trying to do a new take on FM. We have always kind of tiptoed around it. Like Thor has the FM pairs and uh, you can do some right. FM in subtractor, but those are kind of just a, a little bit. It's not this whole like world of, of only frequency modulation synthesis, right? Which, yeah, it's, it's, it's exciting because it's a different way to make sounds. And I think any different way to make a sound will mean you make new sounds. Um, it's, it, it it's interesting in a way that you know I, I look at complex one and algorithm as a pair in a way, but a mm. but sort of like, not, not maternal twins like what are they, fraternal twins or whatever like the, the the concept of having a very front panel interactive way of working is the commonality. Uh, mm. What is different is that I, for me algorithm does it in this like just really intuitive ux whereas complex one does it in a very raw modular yeah yeah cable based in um, a way that that's a result of one being kind of rooted into a, a really old analog synth tradition right with uh, you, you stick cables into big things you mount on your wall while algorithm is firmly rooted in a very digital transition uh, tradition sure fm was was possible in analog too but the, like the the popular fm uh, that's Technically, phase modulation, if you want to get exact, but the one popularized by Yamaha, that's really digital. It's one of the few kind of big synthesis methods that came out and was digital, and that was okay. Right, right. The um, One of the things with, with, with FM, I should say, that I always find so interesting is, at least in the time period we're in right now, is that mm. FM is capable of making the most, like, date specific pigeonhole sounds <laughs> that's like from 1982 to 1988 just like you put you right into that era yeah 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 but it's also capable of making some of the most modern stuff you know and not much else in between it's like you're either making this like super 80s sound or you're making this very forward looking sound with fm yeah, it's a little bit like that right uh, and i think that's uh, that, that was part of our challenge our big kind of when we set out to do this I mean, the background, to, to put it very shortly, is, is I and many others believe that recent, recent rack of instrument should, should really be, you know, something you can turn to and you can always find, uh, find things you want, right? And we had this weird hole kind of in, in synths because we have a, a design philosophy that we don't just take something old and then copy it and make it like, here's that old thing, but you have it. Uh, we try to always put our own spin on it. FM was one where we hadn't done that. I was going to say, we actually, uh, that, that goes counter to what we have done in the past with FM. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> you know. uh, and, and that was a very different project. But here we, we had wanted to finally kind of tackle it the, the reason way, you know, do, do it a bit different. And it came just after friction, which really was the same thought that we had made this big list of, OK, uh, which cool devices uh, haven't we made? And even so far as which synthesis methods haven't we covered? Right. And, and uh, physical modeling and FM were the two big ones and, and friction and now algorithm were the results. And I think they do fill two, two big sized holes in the recent rack. So uh, now I can kind of confidently say 
that we really do have a synthesizer for everything. Before we had a grid in my head, uh, it was kind of, you know, you I couldn't, I couldn't really say it. <laughs> you remind me now, I, I, you know, I've been so algorithm focused that I, I haven't, I haven't spent the week forgetting that friction exists, which but the week prior I was all about friction. <laughs> but I'm, uh, I'm realizing that uh, I haven't yet delved into friction and um, algorithm combinators and sort of bringing mm, in mm. physical modeling with FM. And now mm. it's like, I, can I, I'm going to end the stream now. I'm just going to go do that. Uh, yeah. if, we could, <laughs> if you don't mind. It's always fun mixing and matching between different kind of very different worlds in a way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, should we, um, should we maybe kind of talk a little bit about algorithm and then, and then really let's step on the gas and, and get into the yeah, deep yeah. stuff because um, the beauty of having you is that you know, the deep stuff, um, maybe as well as anyone or better than anyone else, you know? Yeah, one would think so. But before this stream, I had a very long discussion with uh, with Peter where I felt immensely stupid trying to understand some stuff. So <laughs> I, I wouldn't say better than anyone. Should we? No, but, well, okay. Better should, than some. <laughs> should we give a shout out maybe uh, to uh, Peter and Andy? Uh, because uh, as yeah. you have told me that they really are kind of the, the push that brought algorithm into the world is that true maybe you could describe I, their I'd roles say like we have a very uh, a small kind of close-knit team making most of our devices uh, where peter uh, does the dsp and a lot of design and kind of puts it together uh, andy does the graphic design and a lot of product design uh, ludwig also does a lot of product design and i'm kind of up top with a whip <laughs> or at least you know at a high level figuring out what we do and then kind of steering it in the right direction and with algorithm Andy and, and, and Peter worked really, really hard to make the interaction work and the, the design work because it was really a new take. So they, they put in a lot of hours there. The first time you showed me the the front panel and, and algorithm as we know it now, I mm -hmm. was blown away because I had seen a very early prototype build. And mm -hmm. it, if I went back, I'd probably recognize and, and be able to use it in a similar way. But it, when I first, when I see those very, very early prototypes, they're so prototype that I just, I don't have the vision yet. You know, I'm so yeah, visual yeah, based. Right. That I go like, these are, these controls look weird and this is funny colors and things are in not precise places. And yeah, you know. it always, it always comes together at the, at the very end. It's, it's a really tense thing where you see it kind of being worked on and you can't see it work yet until it does work. <laughs> yeah. And, and then, yeah. and when you showed it me the, the first one, uh, the first, not the first one, when you showed me the first, I guess the, first beta where it was i was mm. really just blown away with the with the user experience for it because it mm. just seemed to instantly click for me i mean maybe it's the way i my kind of creative sound design brain works but it just yeah. clicked in a way that that most synths don't click right away for me and fm synths never click for me um, mm. i was never someone for like px7 or or other you know even plugins like fm8 and stuff i just yeah, yeah. they don't click for me but this one clicked mm. in a cool way so c congrats to uh, to Peter and <laughs> yeah, uh, Andy yeah. for that. This, someone said, isn't it Pelle? Yeah, Peter is Pelle. Yeah, yeah, you were right. I saw Ludwig <laughs> corrected us as well and said yeah. Pelle. <laughs> I used the birth name like an idiot. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. Well, let's um, let's check it out and let's uh, let's have some yeah. fun with with it. So I'm going to switch this over. So we're actually seeing algorithm now. And um, yes. There we are. Algorithm, a sine wave for the whole hour. Here we go. Yes. Here we go. Ah, beautiful. <laughs> That's it. Bye. Bye. <laughs> uh, now, I, I have some talking points, but I think we should maybe start with kind of a, a, a super quick, uh, uh, almost recap of your video by saying the really the core of this, uh, this entire synth is that you have these nine slots that you fill with stuff and connect together, right? That's really what it's about and that's where you experiment so even though the blank slate is just one sine wave you should always start by just adding one on top and going because that's how you kind of start getting ideas and start finding the, the timbre you want so as we get deeper always remember that that i might talk about stuff in the mod matrix or something but it's always kind of best to start with setting up a couple of operators right now, I, something I notice uh, that I do as well, and I guess it's even baked into the way it works, is that you went to operator from one to four rather than from one to mm. two. Right. We, this default patch is set up uh, so it kind of works in, uh, 
in columns. Aha, uh, I see the cabling is predetermined. Yeah, exactly. In yeah, in the patch. Uh, and the reasoning being that it just it should be very easy to add modulation to an operator because that's the core of what it does. Of course, you can you can change this and turn it on and recable it, but the the init patch uh, always starts out that way. So if you add one above, it connects to the one below. Right, right. Good to know. Good shortcut. Yeah. So uh, Shiroda says, algorithm is the first synth I can understand what frequency modulating is. I think I, to some degree, I mean, I, I understood it, but it's the first time for me that it really kind of hit in a... Right. In a, such an obvious way. The way that subtractive synthesis is just obvious to me, and suddenly FM is like, oh, yeah, oh, that's, yeah, that's totally yeah, obvious. Yeah, yeah. I think there's uh, one thing that helped me understand. So I, I saw some questions earlier uh, from Instagram and from the YouTube comments about... Uh, designing uh, like uh, uh, neuro bass or dubstep bass sounds. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's an interesting theory there that without designing the sounds I want to get into. Uh, when, once you start clicking with FM, the thing you'll realize is that you really want to care about how two oscillators beat against each other. If I just remove this and play you two, two sine waves, just one semitone apart, you can hear there, there's this beating, right? Yeah. Wait, we just lost sound. Wait, we lost sound. Matthias. We lost sound. Oh no. Your oscillators, you you beat the audio into it. Oh no. All right. He's going to he's going to he's going to work on that. Um Hey, that's my name on the screen. Um what I was what what I was going to say to Matthias while he works on this is that um Dizzy Notra, this is a thing that she does, uh, a type of music, I can't remember what it's called now, but there's like a, it's a sort of meditative type of music, and it's all based around taking two frequencies which are close, but not identical, and actually causing the pulsation that we were just hearing before the audio all went uh, bad. Oh, wait. Yeah, I I'm, I'm trying really hard here. <laughs> oh, oh, I see, you've gone to an internal mic? Yep. Okay. But now I'm back to the right one. Oh, yeah. Oh, great. There we go. Okay. We're Hooray! Back. Something bad happened. Something I'm bad. Sorry about that. All right. Let's never, let's never, let's, let's never play sign low sine waves again. Ever again. <laughs> okay. But no, good. I now, hope it's going to hold up. If it hold, if it hold, now you know what to do if it happens again. So we'll just see. Yeah. 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 So basically, you can hear this whoa, 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 that the frequencies are kind of beating against each other. Yeah. That's really a way to get this cool FM kind of wobble because when you have something modulating the other one, if they're at the same ratio and frequency, it's all clean. But if you start detuning it ever so slightly, you can actually hear the, that kind of frequency beating. And a lot of the kind of cool uh, bass sounds, here's one that someone made. It's actually just two oscillators being very ever just so slightly, slightly off. I mean, I'm going to zoom in because that's that's interesting. And here, it's not even this patch is not even using FM. Just to be super clear, this one is just routing three oscillators into a shaper to kind of make it loud. Uh, oh, interesting! The frequencies are just really close to each other. This is so a neuro, yeah. Of, so this is a neuro base. Oh, this is one I saw. This actually brought up. Because I used this in the tutorial video, mm. and somebody asked, uh, they couldn't find this patch in the uh, factory. Oh, yeah. Th this one is included in uh, one of the packs in, one... uh, in Reason Plus. Right. Uh, Reason Plus gets new packs every week. And, so, and all right, guys. Algorithm came out. You're getting a sneak peek. You're getting a sneak peek of the copy, panel. Copy this screenshot patch. this. <laughs> Quick. Everybody screenshot it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But it, this kind of theory uh, is, applies to FM too, right? It's like the beating between the, right. the interval between the, the operators, the frequencies. That's what kind of makes the sound more or less harmonic. And, and what I wanted to talk about first is that thing, right? So one thing you didn't talk about in your uh, otherwise great tutorial <laughs> was the frequency mode. Yes, so, yes. So right now I have just... Base frequency into base frequency, and I can detune it. So, and in fact, something I didn't even go into the decimal element yeah, of this. Yeah, right, right. So when so I let's start there, maybe. Yeah, because I what I what I showed was that when you move the integer, the the big number, 
Yeah. Uh, you're moving through the harmonic series. Right. But there's also all these in-betweens, right? The, the, the decimal, like you said. If you pull here, you go without kind of going through the overtone series. This is also how you get quite nice kind of less harmonic bell sounds. Yes. And you have these kind of... Because it's not supposed to be clean. The metal is the metal, right? It's uh, you get these wonky uh, overtones. Right. But that's that's the linear mode. Uh, what we didn't talk about was that there are actually more frequency modes. So you might not actually want this kind of almost disharmonic, uh, inharmonic sound. Right. Uh, luckily, there are two more modes: step and fade. And what changes when I I change these is that. Instead, uh, we snap onto in step or fade into uh, the overtones. So even if I move this. It always goes to the closest real harmonic of the key you're playing. And why so, would you want that? Yeah, well, that's right. Because I was going to say that's the same as moving just the integer. Yeah, because if you modulate it, so I'm going to take just random. This is a good thing in the mod matrix to remember. There are sources like random that just sends a random value whenever you hit the key. So if I take random here, now it will just set frequency randomly, but it always snaps to an overtone. So it will always be harmonic. Now you're just playing a key over and over. Is that one key over and over again? No, I can play, I can play one key. So even though it's randomly setting the value, it always snaps to an harmonic overtone so that you, you can't get these off ones. If I set it to linear, you'll hear. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you know what, Matthias? I'm going to get really wonky ones. I'm going to just mention, a, a, because when you got your audio working again, we didn't turn on original sound in Zoom. Ah, um, okay. Well, one second. So noise noise canceling is kicking in. It's, it's hearing that in heart. It's funny, actually. It heard the harmonic one and sent that through, but then it kicked in the uh -huh. noise canceling on the in harmonics. That makes sense. It's less good. It... You can hear it. It becomes kind of. Yeah. Also great in many ways, but right. it doesn't hit harmonic overtones. But if you way. want to, yeah, if you want to kind of keep the same sonic center, yeah. tonal yeah. center, um, uh, so, so that's a really cool thing with step, and you can do that with an LFO too. I was going to say, maybe could we, yeah, there you go, good. Yeah, could we do it with an LFO? Yes, let's just. So now it snaps to the overtones, right? But an LFO is a nice sine wave in this case, a nice curve. So if you don't want it to snap, well, luckily that's what fade is for. Fade does the very same thing, but it cross fades between the harmonics. So So now you're getting only the harmonics of the keys you're playing, so it never is inharmonic, but you can modulate it in various ways. It's got a really cool I mean it, it to to an ear that's not listening critically it mm. achieves an effect similar yet different to just a filter, a nice sort of filter suite. Right, right, a little bit like that. And if you use something like the, uh, let's say, an envelope. And here's a little trick. If I want an extra envelope, I can just create an operator without an output. And I can use this envelope, so like envelope number three for slot three, to modulate stuff. So output, oh. I can actually have this decay while this is playing. So, so that, wait, I, wait, wait, that's really cool. You, you're saying I you... Know, right? you <laughs> You've created you nine envelopes. <laughs> you've created an operator. You're not routing it using the routing section. You're not going anywhere. Yep. yep. But you're referencing just the envelope inside yep. envelope of the three. mod matrix to then exactly. modulate to then other modulate things. this this frequency. So look it's at good that. With... Right here, you can hear quite clearly that if you have a decay. That's really nice with the fade because it, it's always harmonic, but you still get the brighter in the beginning and then it goes down to the... Right. 
intended frequency. Henrik uh, yeah. says, the, Fade, such a good idea. I, I agree, Henrik. Yeah, it's, it's really good. The thing we, we <laughs> had long discussions about on, on Slack before this stream was that it has some really, some other usefulness that might be a little hard to understand. So uh, this thing that fades, this is changing the overtone. Yeah. Uh, and chasing the overtone from the key you're playing. However, you have this keyboard follow here. So if I just remove this for a second, if I turn keyboard follow to off, it doesn't matter which key I'm playing. You're playing multiple just, keys on your keyboard right yep, now. Yep. We're getting one pitch. We just play a C. And 50%, it will scale it by 0.5. So it, if I play a, a major scale, oh, it's not, qu not quite a major scale. Uh, that's really cool with this one too, right? So if I turn on, uh, turn off key in linear mode, I can just set the, uh, let's remove this modulation. <laughs> I can just set a static value here. And this bell attack will always be the same pitch. Huh. Regardless of where I play on the keyboard, right? Interesting. Because you would have the, the same material on the stick you're beating the bell. Right. I mean, I'm, right? I'm thinking about, you know, um, <laughs> what everybody's thinking about the banjo and of course when <laughs> what you, else <laughs> when you have a, a finger pick a metal finger pick that you're using on a banjo there is that constant sound of the just the the metal yeah, on metal it, 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 steel string um mm. and that's interesting so that's a way to sort of, i could imagine and we're, we're going to get into things like the resonator but i could imagine yeah. that when you combine that sort of technique with things like the resonator you can really start getting into um replicating real world things in a way right, that right, I, right. I i don't think fm is thought of as a a, a physical modeling uh, oh, I'll, I'll play you some patches that will tell you otherwise i know i know yeah uh, I, i'm seeing some comments that i'm too low do you mean that my voice is too low they probably mean that reason it's the it's the forever issue that uh, guest audio is always lower than than me um, yeah, it's because of your pristine quality and setup i gotta i gotta <laughs> turn myself maybe, maybe i'll just do that i could just turn myself down we'll see how that goes but okay yeah uh, i'll also speak louder yeah it's, okay. <laughs> so so with that in mind so key off means this won't follow. However, in fade and step mode, it, that's not quite right. Uh, because while the pitch you're playing stops following, this is now fading between the overtones and the overtone will still fade to the nearest overtone uh, th that's available for the key. If key is off, that's uh, a C3, I think. So you get this almost formant like It is so almost cool like a sounding. vocal quality, right? I don't think I understand what's happening, but I like it. <laughs> I hardly understand what's happening. But but basically, it's still the overtones are still tracking and fading to something that makes sense, but the root pitch is not tracking. So it, it kind of it's a bit wonky to explain, but the key is it makes cool sounds. So compare with the off. Almost like a, a bit of a filter while on. Enough. Yeah, so you're right. The overtone is kind of in the same place, but it's still harmonic. It never gets this weird inharmonic thing that you would get in, in linear. Right, right. So that's a cool trick. That uh, is cool. Wow. One of the really nice things with that, though, if I take just a patch. Here's a nice patch I made once. <laughs> So it's, it's a, quite a simple patch, really. It's a pad using only FM operators. Uh, one a, thing that, that's, that, that is that's, great here. That patch is like my new favorite go-to pad sound. Like, I don't yeah, it's a, it's a bit too much, so, so watch out. <laughs> but it's great for an intro. I was going to say, to be and fair, the, I haven't actually put it into a multi-track production. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, a fun side note for anyone keeping track at home. This is one of, I believe, maybe 15 patches referencing uh, the video game I was playing at the time. <laughs> oh. So if you ever played Monster Hunter, you'll find a, a, lot, of, a lot of references. Uh, but the thing I wanted to get to is that you showed a randomizer in your video. I did. I did. And one of the things with the randomizer that's a bit wonky, perhaps, that uh, 
In fact, I'll, I'll show it without this patch at first. If I just do a bunch of FM operators here and turn them on, so here's the sound. And then I want to randomize the frequency. That is the, it um, it. it's an instant THX or... <laughs> right, right, almost, right? <laughs> or is it Dolby? Maybe it's <laughs> Dolby really has the bad the THX. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like off-brand the THX. Off -brand. It's, it's, <laughs> That's right. It's BHX. BHX. <laughs> 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 but but you can hear the problem, right? It's just randomizing the frequencies as intended. But since we're in this linear mode, you get these fractions that will not sound particularly pleasing to your ear, right? Uh, so if I were to do Valkyrie Record Maker, but these were all set to linear, I would have the same problem that even if I hold a nice chord, oops, a, a nice chord, I said. Now it's in a different key. It doesn't even match with my song, right? Right, right. I'm playing a C major, but it's something else. In linear mode, however, uh, or sorry, in fade mode, it always does overtones from the keys you're using. So you won't ever actually be completely inharmonic. So now I can randomize the frequency. <laughs> Wow. And it stays in tune. So that's one of the really big advantages of the, of the fade and step mode. I think it makes randomizing so much easier and, and more immediate and more fun. Right. So this is, this is something that has been talked about uh, because as soon as people started seeing the randomizer, mm -hmm. um, there is a group of people that you know, I guess as a compliment to the randomizer, they started going, <laughs> wait, well, we have one more feature we'd like to add, which is a, a lock feature where you could sort of lock off uh, certain modules. Mm. And there isn't a lock feature. So so this has a method of sort of um, locking at least tonally what's happening. You're still moving exactly. the frequencies. Right. but so, so to summarize it like in a super kind of simple way is that instead of changing your pitch, you're changing... The harmonics you're still playing the same pitches but the harmonics change and the harmonics are generally part of the sound right the sawtooth has all the harmonics yeah, yeah. so it will still sound nice <laughs> that that's your takeaway here use linear or step mode if you want it to sound nice uh, sorry uh, uh, fade or step mode right and use linear mode if you also want some inharmonic things there's another question coming in um that is the natural extension of seeing the randomizer and hearing you move that they go oh mm. that sounds cool when you move it can we right. automate the randomizer? Uh, the, the, the short answer is kind of. <laughs> the long answer is that the randomizer is actually a macro control. How it works is when you click it, when you click it over here, it actually randomized a brand new patch internally. And when you drag, you morph into that patch. Your Every control so, that you've selected to be randomized is, exactly. is morphing into that destination. You're saying yeah. as soon as you mouse down, that destination is predetermined, right? Yep. Yeah. And then you morph into that. Uh, so if I click it, it just does new patches all the time, right? Uh, however, it's controlling parameters that exist and it's setting those parameters. So you see the frequency does change here. Yeah. Uh, if you automated a randomizer with, with just an automation language randomizer, you would end up with this weird situation where uh, you're automating this control but what about these ones? They're moving. Is it 1.27 still if you've automated it to go here? So what happens when you change it? So what actually happens if you randomize is it records all of the changes. Yeah. So here you actually have the changes in the frequency that I just did. So you're, you're, uh, what you're automating is actually the more pure thing, which is the result of right, the randomizer. Right. The, the end result right, exactly. is the same. So it's that it's that kind of weird, um, mm. it's that somewhat weird thing of of can you automate the randomizer? Yes. Are you automating yeah. the randomizer? Do you want to? <laughs> no, but are you literally automating the randomizer? Yeah. Yeah. No, you're automating 
what the randomizer is doing. And so you're getting yeah, the yeah. sonic effect of it. Exactly. So when you automate the randomizer, you just record an automation lane for every single parameter you change. So the more you have, the more unruly it's going to be. Uh, someone also asked if there's an undo function for the randomizer. Uh, and yes, our normal undo. So just if I hit command Z, it goes back to where it was when right. I hit mouse down. So you can always undo. Uh, and that's probably my best tip is just take a patch. I still like it undo, random like it undo. Uh, that I made use of the stuff. randomizer undo during um, when I was making the tutorial and I was pleasantly surprised to, to, <laughs> that it worked because there was a lot of randomizing during that section. Yeah, yeah. Undo is really like, like Ludwig. Uh, listen to Ludwig. He, he, he was designing this with us. He's uh, our designer. He knows. Undo is a crucial tool when using the randomizer. Yes. Definitely is. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so I think that that kind of covers frequency modes, which I think is important uh, to understand. It's also one of the more unique features. It, it means that you can do traditional FM that can get really inharmonic and wonky, or you can do really kind of pretty always in tune. Right. Uh, so that's, that's uh, something that I think is, uh, yeah, really important to cover. The other thing I kind of want to mention is... Uh, Perhaps it's a little bit about the design of the things we chose here. You you covered really well, Ryan, the, when you would use a filter, a shaper, or the other oscillator type, right? Yeah. For example, I love using uh, oscillator with the sine and noise as a modulator. So you can go from this. It becomes more. Yeah. At lower uh, levels here, it can add just a bit of movement. That's, that's really kind of funny, especially on higher frequencies. Right, you, you can get a making nice a really and nice, yeah, shimmery pad sound. It's just one kind of sign and noise uh, modulating this other one. Slap on a bit of reverb, a lot of reverb. Uh, so when we when we made the oscillator and noise, in fact, the uh, fun fact is that noise was a separate uh, module in the beginning this sign noise thing because uh -huh. it was it was part of the operator it had a noise level uh, but this design kind of made more sense uh, but the reason these oscillators exist is kind of to have more interesting things to modulate the operators with right to, uh, to go into a sine wave fm operator exactly yeah uh, you can do stuff like you use these more complex Let's take this one. More what is that? By the way, toes. framtid, that's a Swedish word, but I can't remember what it is. <laughs> that's the only one that's a Swedish word. Uh, it means future. It is literally a wavetable that I made by sampling uh, or kind of making a wavetable out of a 10-minute modular performance I did called framtid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's my little Easter egg for you. It's, it's my entire song, but in a wavetable. Oh, cool. <laughs> uh, but what's good with those is you get a lot of harmonics. You get a lot of it and you can get, you know, really high ones and it can change a lot. So this one. That's kind of why they're there. Uh, but it I mean, that's, the it's, question. It's, it really, it does still kind of blow my mind that that's just a two module sound. I know, right? You, you just need long attack and reverb and you're always home. <laughs> uh, but one thing that uh, we didn't cover in the video that's kind of important to know is that since this is designed around FM operators, these actually behave a little bit differently uh, when used as the thing being modulated. Right. So, and this is just, uh, I, I like transparency and people understanding and I know the manual, you should read the manual. It's a really good manual. I Absolutely. learned something from it today. <laughs> but uh, one thing to note is that when you're putting something, like, let's take this, modulating an oscillator from the OSCAN noise, it's actually doing amplitude modulation, not frequency modulation. 
So you hear when they're the same here, you almost hear nothing. It's really just a, almost a doubling of volume only, right? Yeah, because it's two sine waves kind of playing the same frequency, modulating how loud it should be uh, when it's already loud, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you can hear the difference when you pick up the frequency. So that is a difference, and, and it's important to know when you go, this does this doesn't quite sound like FM. Well, only the FM operators are really for doing FM. The so oscillators the... are more for to being the kind of the modulator, not the carrier, right? Uh, to add something extra or to use standalone. Right, so it's right. A good thing to know about the synthesizer. When you want to do FM, you load up FM operators and you put stuff into them. Right, yeah, and I had that experience... Uh, early on when I started playing with algorithm, that is the natural thing. You start out, you're playing with FM operators, and then you go, oh, wait, I'll, I'll FM a, a, awesome, a, a wavetable. Mm. And, and then it doesn't, it does something, but it doesn't behave yeah, the yeah. way FM does. And so... It is, it is actually kind of nice to have another way uh, uh, to modulate too. You, you quickly find, once you start using this, that you can get so many sounds out of just FM operators. <laughs> that the rest is almost almost gravy in a way, uh, because you can, you can go so very, very, very far with just FM operators. Right. Uh, there are, let's try a couple of patches. I think some of the most impressive, of course, were made by Pelle because he knows how everything works. But all of his patches can like, yes, this is a real instrument, but it's only FM operators. So here's a little brass section. <laughs> That swell, just, it's the swell that gets me at the end. <laughs> it's impressive, right? Wait, do it but again. Also, I want to hear more swells. Wait, no, don't okay, go. Mo Stay more, more swells. More, more brass, swells. more brass. I love it. Or also sound like the marimba here. This one... This one is the one that really kind of does... Yeah, this one could fool, fool me in, in any situation. Yes, yes, absolutely. But you can see the key here is uh, there's one non-FM operator, but that's for getting some noise. Uh, I think, let's double check that it's... Uh, actually, it's not used for noise. Pelle's in the it's, chat. I'm sure he, he'll let us know what, yeah. what's happening. But, but in many of the patches, you'll see that these are kind of thrown in to get a bit of noise in the attack or to get an interesting harmonic in the kind of overtones. Uh, so you see many kind of... I'm noticing... Patches. Oh, sorry, you left it. But um, yeah, I, I, Go on. I noticed some of them. I don't know if it's the thing we were talking about earlier has some of that uh, key, 50% uh, key rather than just key follow at uh, 100%. Right, right, right. Uh, that's kind of to get one of the more, uh, you know, stuff that doesn't follow the pitch directly. Like it's, not everything resonates exactly the same. And but like pitch. for the marimba, like you've got this the, mm. the sound of a mallet striking a wood block, and that mm. that timbre yeah. isn't going to change as notes. And change. you always also in um, in really like these kind of patches, you always see in the mod matrix that key is used a lot as the source. So this is depending on the pitch you're playing, it will affect something. Right? Mm -hmm. So if you play really high pitches, it will lower the decay because a marimba rings out a lot with bottom notes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But not in high notes. Oh, cool. So I, there was a comment there that came in from uh, Mark Laflame. He says, play Monkey Island. And that's... Uh... <laughs> oh, I wish I, I wish I could. I bet your brother could. Yeah, yeah, my brother. Well, he, he did not the original Monkey Island soundtrack, but the, the remake that they did. Which is great. The remake soundtrack is it's amazing. <laughs> Some great flute performances, I <laughs> as my friend will. Uh, so, so that's a, a little bit just the philosophy behind the oscillator and noise. I think it's just important to know that yeah. they're, they're mainly there to add more modulation options, but also just in, in the interest of kind of clarity, I guess, there's a bunch of patches that just use them as sound sources too. So here are three of the oscillators. I'll actually turn off the other ones. I'll just use it as a, a triangle pulse width and a wavetable.
Ooh. So you can always use them just as oscillators if you want to. Right, right. That's really nice. Good to know. Uh, okay. I do, I do really enjoy, questions? you know, and, and in my own experimentation, I really have enjoyed that hybrid nature where you can, mm. you know, when you're using a, uh, a wavetable or a subtractive synthesizer or something like Thor, well, well, Thor's got FM2, but you know what I mean. When you're, when you're using, we'll say Europa and you're, mm. you're thinking about it in terms of wavetable synthesis and wave shaping. Right. When you're using an FM synthesizer, you're thinking about it in terms of FM and this little panel here becomes a playground where you can really think in all types of synthesis at all times mm. and you can just say you know what it's almost like a a, a mini combinator if i could be weird about it for a second where yeah. it's like <laughs> a little know, bit like that you've got you've got all the types of synthesis right in front of you there and you can yeah. just think i'm going to add a little wavetable element to this fm sound and yeah exactly you got some building blocks right so uh i want to talk a little bit about the effects too which i i think uh, is something we haven't really covered a lot. So I just made a little simple bell sound here for starters. <clears throat> There's a bunch of ways that you can get wide sounds. So a really unnecessary one would be, actually, let's show this, would be to <laughs> use the panning. So okay. if I want this sound, but I want to do traditional, like slightly detune and pan, Sure. I can actually just copy these over by holding option and dragging. Whoop. So Whoop. option dragging directly in the in the routing section. Yep. It's uh, worth copies them over with the same settings. And worth noting though it does not copy over the cabling by design. That's exactly. A... Yeah, yeah, that's by design. They just copy over the settings for the slot. Yeah. So now I have two identical ones. And then if I just pan them a bit left and right. And then I can use tune. This is important. This is a fine tune, but it comes after all the frequency and overtone stuff. So whatever you do here, you can then fine tune the real, the output of that, so to speak. So it's after the fact. So that's a way to do stereo. It's very wasteful of slots, so there are more, more ways to do it. Uh, the unison section is a bit different from uh, when you think about maybe the Europa unison or something like that. So I, I want to cover that a little bit. Uh, it's up to four voices here. Uh, you can set the timing, which is really uncommon. We, we, we kind of borrowed that from friction. Uh, that was more supposed to be a, a string section, so you can get the different attacks. But it works really well with these kinds of sounds too. Yeah, it's a very, it's a much longer timing than other unisons. Yeah. You can go really high. That's quite nice. It's funny, and then there again is that same concept of you're thinking of all types of synthesis at the same time, because suddenly you're, you're at least me, I'm hearing that, and I'm getting into this sort of physical modeling mindset of that right, sound. Right, you're playing it differently. Yeah, 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 yeah. So here you can also add detune. Of course, and spread. So that's the stereo with. Yeah. Oh, that's really that's nice. Really cool. That's really wide. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one thing that uh, is really cool about Unison. This is this is <laughs> this is bonus level knowledge, but it's really cool. There's a source. So I talked a bit about random, for example. There are some really useful sources in the mod matrix. Random and key, velocity, of course. You can also have noise, which is just plain noise if you just want a little bit of fizzle and something. Yeah. But there's something called unison index. And you go, what? <laughs> what is unison index? Basically, unison index sends uh, a value depending on which of the unison voices is playing. So they get different values. So if I take that to pitch, uh, while raising this, they'll just get increasing uh, increasing values depending on the voice. Uh, that makes no sense. I'm no, I do, wait, wait. <laughs> but so it's just so basically everything is getting a different value if there are different unison voice. So this only works when unison is on. Now, can you explain to says, why that's different than just turning up the detune? Uh, detune doesn't go this far at all. So detune is just detune these voices yeah right but this says uh depending there, there are five uh, or four voices here now uh, i have four wildly different values 
and I'm gonna send those to something. I'm using pitch as an example. You can get. Oh, I see. Yeah, it really does go. I want it there. Sixty-five. I have to use two hands. It's kind of cool. Wow. So that's actually a really cool way. And you can set this to something else too. So to a filter frequency or to the overtones of, of this one, right? So now I get brighter overtones in some of the voices and less bright in some other ones. It's in a, in a weird way. Am I correct in saying that it's, it's kind of a, it's like a backdoor hack to actually getting more operators. A little bit, yeah, because, I mean, in reality, that's what Unison does. It just four times the synth. <laughs> and then it lets you go, okay, but the difference is in the four times the synth. I'm going to make those more pronounced. Yeah, so you've got, I just, you just can, for, for you people. You can do this with, with stupid, really stupid stuff. You can do it in a wavetable and go, and in fact, you change the wavetable uh, mod here, depending on. Oh, different. Voice. So each Unison voice will have different wavetable positions. Yeah, exactly. I'll, I'll remove pitch for now. Now I'm playing uh, four different parts of the wavetable at the same time. Instead of just the one. Yeah. Briggs, Briggs says, my brain hurts. Yeah, this is, this is some like... <laughs> this is the advanced <laughs> but let's, stuff. But for people like Briggs, let me, let, let's see if we can, we can try and make this uh, as clear as we can. And if we can't, then it's, that's just the point where everybody has their point where they have to tap out on their synth, synth knowledge. Um, and I'm right on the edge of mine, but I understand this. So I'm going to try and explain <laughs> this to people. Using the mod matrix, what Matthias is doing is he's telling the unison module on algorithm to treat the how do i how do i explain this wait <laughs> wait <laughs> now i i can explain it in a better way so okay the, each unison says now you have four copies of this synth yes right that's that's what unison uh, is doing it's, it's yeah it's making believe that there are it's treating or creating yep. virtually four copies of that synth yeah yeah and, and unison index says well each of these copies now has a different value from very low to very high. Yeah. And these values now become a modulation source saying, send these different values to this parameter. They will be different depending on the voice. So you'll get four different results. One will be really high, one will be a bit high, one will be a bit low, and one will be really low. So you get the differences in the voices. Right. So you can kind of make your unison affect more things than just tune and, and spread. Right, right. Which is a, a crazy thing. So, yeah, this is really the advanced stuff. But for some of you out there, this is going to be the coolest thing since sliced bread. So, right. I, I want to at least cover it. Yeah, I, th can, I think it's a, it's make a cool thing. Stuff. It's like this is this is we are in the on the the bleeding edge of of advanced here. Um, in fact, uh, IMLX says uh, I feel like Reason is really good at making quote complicated synths that are complicated in an actually rewarding way, and I think that is certainly true. I certainly feel that way as well. Mm. Ludwig yeah. uh, chimed in and he said something that maybe makes sense to you. You can turn down the unison knobs to only hear the unison index routing. Ah, right. You don't actually have need to have timing, detune, or spread. To, to... Aha. Ah. It still says there are four voices. Doesn't matter if you've used timing, detune, or yeah, spread. Yeah, so you yeah, can yeah, yeah. I use gotcha. that as a creative way to, to layer stuff up. Ah, there you go. Uh, funky thing. Uh, I really like it. It's uh, wonky in all the right ways, uh, but it, it makes for amazing patches. Uh, the other way to affect patches, uh, let's turn this on, uh, is of course with the effects section. And the keen-eyed among you <laughs> might notice that there are some news here. Uh, we generally use uh, a type of effect section for our synthesizers. Uh, there's, to be perfectly honest, Reason has so many great effects that the main reason for having effects built into the synthesizer rather than having them in a combinator is just to make sure patches can sound really good, uh, you know, out of the box. Right. Uh, so it's not the most important thing, right? But we did add a new one, the resonator. Uh, 
yeah we might recognize uh, some of this from friction too it's another thing we kind of borrowed because it was so cool so basically this is a, a convolution based resonator where you can put your sound inside a more realistic body in this case a violin we've taken all the ones that were available here but there's also some new ones uh cookware. Do, you, do you see it there people do you see what's in there <laughs> don't don't see <laughs> yeah so this you is a whole get... this was one that's not in friction yeah exactly and you can get more kind of uh more kind of natural sounds because one of the challenges with fm I mean, we've gone, <laughs> we've done perhaps too much to alleviate this, but one of the challenges, it can sound very, very synth, very digital, very kind of right. clean. Uh, but putting it in kind of a, a real wooden body, metal body can actually lead to some really cool uh, sound design. Like yeah. here it gets really sharp because it's this metal body, right? Here's without and with. Yeah, wow. And it does. It just, it's just, a really fun thing to experiment with. It, it sort of trips the, the brain out a little bit because I'm hearing a digital a sound that my brain goes, that is digital. And I'm hearing it have physical properties. And it's like, mm. it's a weird thing for my brain to kind of, but it's cool. It's, it's, a, it's a nice yeah, thing for yeah. sure. Uh, and, the, uh, for, for people asking what furniture and cookware yeah 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 know, i was about to say yeah uh, that <laughs> it's actually a result P pelle recorded uh, some really uh, some really nice impulse responses but perfectly honestly just named them peter one peter two and peter three <laughs> and then we didn't really remember what they were <laughs> so <laughs> i went back and went i guess this could be Furniture. It's not actual Ooh. cookware, or it could be. It, it was. It was stuff around his house, so okay. I'm not far off. <laughs> so these are more. These are the three fun ones, and these are instruments from uh, Ludus Home. Aha. Uh -huh. Balalaika, a cajon, a banjolele. All right. Uh, so there's some fun stuff there. Uh, this is. I think of this as a bit of spice, right? You make a patch and you go. Well, I wonder if I can make it sound a bit different. So I was going to say, at what point in your in your sound design journey? At what point do you go into the effects in general or at what point do you go into things like the resonator particularly i tend to like when i approach effects i do i do two ways uh one way turn on the reverb first because i always want big reverbs on everything i do it's it's a disease but otherwise i do the patch before i add effects so i found you know something that sounds interesting some operator routing that has fun overtones or goes rah, rah, rah. and then i go oh this would be cool with distortion right so a, a really typical example would be if i make one of these kind of bell patches right let's set up a nice kind of fretless thing. fingers fretless fingers is saying that organic uh, uh organic sounding fm with one device sounds like a paradox it does sound like a paradox but also sounds cool yeah so I'm going to set this up. It's a, a simple little bell patch, right? This is a typical example of, I would go, okay. It sounds pretty cool, but I would want it to uh, have some more character for the song I'm doing. It's kind of a lo-fi song. So I would go, I would have a lot of early reflections, but a bit of damping. This is new, by the way, the early reflection, reflection control in the reverb. Uh -huh. Nice to know. Just a little bit here. Then I would probably move this first and go, okay, if I have some distortion afterwards. This is something, by the way, that I forgot existed. Um, oh, moving the effects? Yes. Um, yeah, I, and yeah, I started, I, I did it or I saw you do it while we were doing some algorithm work together. And I was like, mm. oh, right. And like, so it's worth reminding people, you can reorder yeah. these effects in the effects section. Just drag and drop. And that, and that effectively is like um, when you get into multiple effects it becomes like a pedal board almost of mm, like mm. what comes first in the chain yeah this is an uh, uh andy special andy our uh, visual designer and product designer he always wants a bit of kind of little grit and then maybe some delay let's take quite a bit of delay and then maybe some compression to really kind of make that distortion come up so 
So, so when I do patch design, I tend to kind of start with the sound and then go, how can I? It's interesting to it see. Up? It's interesting to see your process of working. It, it really is almost a whole second round of sound design. Where yeah, it, it is a bit like that. I, I I can show you briefly some of the patches I made for for the synth. We had a lot of fun internally making making patches. I think this is the most and probably the best patches we've done internally. Of course, we had professional sound designers. We paid for this too, but some of our patches were so nice that we kind of went, oh, these are going in there. Uh, so you'll see a lot of stuff that I've done that has the same kind of idea, right? This one has a bit of distortion. Yeah. The metal resonator. Oh wow! You gotta make make it a bit more. I love I, mean, I love effects like that where it's not awful with it gone, but you really do miss it. You know? Yeah. Like, right. I wanted to kind of get some of the bass away without using an EQ. And then a bit of reverb. And in this case, I'm using just the high pass filter to get away another, some of the kind of low frequency from this. Otherwise, it's a very simple patch. It's similar to what I've been showing you so far. It's uh, simple operators with high pitched operators kind of producing bells right? yeah yeah interesting uh, there's a couple of those similar ones uh, <laughs> push but, but push then button I also says, made, uh, yeah if i hadn't just bought a car this would be an insta buy <laughs> <laughs> Here's one uh, that's dedicated to stefan uh, this was okay how can i make it really horrible to you so it, watch your ears for this one but this is basically taking every everything up to maximum frequency, so, so it's really, really high up there, uh, linear modes, sending random to several frequencies and random to feedback, and I feedback routed several of these to get these kind of screeching, horrible noises. Whenever I press a key, it will do a new noise. I'm fearing it already. Ah. Huh. It's one of those things that you just wanted to try if it worked. <laughs> I, I mean, that, that's the stuff where I just go like, how, did you, how do you th even think to, like, to do that? I, I'm always in just awe. Just put, put random to everything and you're going to be fine. <laughs> 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 but this one, I actually, I added these, this operator pair that I'm controlling with the mod wheel. So you can go and then take up the root note. It's, it's a really dumb patch, but it's just an example <laughs> of what you can do with random, right? Yeah, it's, it, you know, it's, it's one of those ones, there's certain patches that I hear where I, I hear them and I go, well, there's no musical use for that. And then I see it as a challenge. We're like, no, there must yeah. be, and I will find it. <laughs> Here's another one that's using the filter, which uh, is it's interesting, just because I'm running the feedback through the filter. This is something I saw in one of Pelle's patches. When you feed an, uh, a sine wave operator back into itself, you create feedback. Uh, I'll show you just that first. There's a, I'm gonna, while you set up here, I'm, there's a question from Toby. He says, do you have a patch from the last example in the manual? And Toby, just remind us in the comments which example you mean, because um, there's a delay, so I'm not sure which patch. Right. So just showing you feedback first. Feeding it back into itself, an FM operator will... I have a lot of effect on this, but basically turns it into a saw wave. Wait, 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 wait. You're feeding so back I'll, I'll a sine wave? The effect for now. <laughs> yep. Just regular feedback in this one, seven. A single operator itself. feeding back yep. into itself. It becomes more like a sawtooth. Yeah. Uh, it, it tilts its own waveform. It does the it, math checks the math checks out. <laughs> I was, can, can you can you throw up on screen the um, uh, spectrum analyzer? Sure. So you'll see it goes from sine wave, no right? Harmonics to there it is. Saw uh, classic saw. So, so that's cool. that's kind of what feedback does. But uh, a sawtooth has all the harmonics in it, right? It's uh, well, they're tilting down, but you hear you hear all the overtones. So when using a filter in the feedback chain, you're basically saying, sure, 
it will feed back and it will be uh, a soft boot. But I'll remove some of those frequencies using the bandpass filter. You can hear it. Kind of travels through. Wow. That, that's right. That's courtesy of the envelope, the filter envelope. Wait, wait. Matthias, the sound went away. The sound went away again. Do your special sound fix. While he does that, I will check in on the chat. Oh, man. Um, never throw up on screen. See, I just asked. Oh, apparently I asked Matthias to throw up on cue. Ludwig no. is saying never throw up on screen. I don't know what I... Oh, throw say, it up on screen. Did I say said. throw up the spectrum analyzer or something? I don't know. I'm kidding. Yeah, probably. I see. Now I'm back. You are back. Welcome back. But you didn't hit uh, original sound. I didn't hit the original sound. Do I have to turn it on every time? There's a oh. there's a setting that'll make it the default, but we haven't chosen oh. that. So. Yeah, we haven't chosen that. Okay. Sorry, Zoom stuff. It's all good. It's all so, good. You're becoming so fast at case, fixing that audio dropout, so congratulations. I know, right? <laughs> in this case, so I'm controlling... Uh, I'm controlling the kind of the feedback. Uh, I'm kind of taking away some of the frequencies to make the the feedback less pronounced. Right. If I hit really hard, I have the envelope um, and the velocity here controlling level. You can hear it, but if I play like a normal person, you can hear it just kind of wow a little bit. And then, of course, a load of effects. Oh, wow. Ooh, that just transforms it. Yeah, effects. Powerful thing. <laughs> wow. That really took it to a whole nother level. Uh, there's a question uh, that I'd, I'll throw up on screen here. Um, any yep. news on if people would be allowed to buy rack extensions despite being subscribed to Reason Plus? Uh, there's no reason you couldn't. You wouldn't. Yeah, there was a bug. Uh, oh. There was, and I d it might still be there, but it's very high priority for us to fix. Oh, okay. Uh, basically, uh, the shop was looking for a recent license, and Reason Plus doesn't technically have a recent license. So it said, no, no, you can't buy this. Oh. Uh, but that's something we want to fix, too. I see. Okay, cool. Yeah, so... So, so no the, the answer is, if not, yes, now, yes, soon. Yes, exactly. Uh Okay, I'm looking at my little cheat sheet here. You want to do a quickie, too, before you... Whatever's next on your uh, little notes. Mm -hmm. um, people have been asking to see the back of the rack, and maybe just a quick... Oh, yeah, 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 sure. Sure, sure, sure. Ta-da! Uh, Ta-da! And now, in terms of what we're, we're looking at there, it's, uh, it's pretty straightforward, right? It's just... You've got yep. four CV input and output, which you access via the mod matrix. Is that correct? Exactly. So whatever you route into the CV modulation input, you can then grab... From over here and go CV inputs. And so some people were asking asking questions like, are there CV jacks on the back for each m module? And mm, mm. Uh, they no, but they you get to them the same way if you wanted right uh, to modulate. It's a little bit tricky that since the modules can be in any configuration and be any type of module. Uh, so we opted for the more kind right. of straightforward approach because there's a lot of modulation in here, and that's kind of what I wanted to talk about next too. Oh, hey, well, well, well done on that. Uh, industry uh leading know, pivot right? uh so I, i'm gonna use just a, a little wavetable here that's how it sounds gonna perhaps take it up so one thing you might want to do with wavetables is uh of course modulate the wavetable position this wave mod right uh you sometimes want to use an envelope or an LFO. And like I said before, you can get an envelope from one of the slots, but then you've used up a slot for an envelope for no reason. Yeah. So what we also do have are these curve uh, modulators. So the LFOs, pretty straightforward. It, they are three LFOs. They have different waveforms and they cycle continuously. Right? They're like any LFO in, in the recent synthesizer. The curves are a bit different. They can be used in a variety of ways. So one of those ways is to turn off stepped and it's literally a curve. If you set this to one shot, then it's like an envelope. So every time you play, this will cycle through. Mm. So here you have quite interesting complex envelopes uh, that you can get from LFO and curve. So I'm gonna take curve one here 
and change this wave mode. So that's now sweeping the wave table via the curves. Yes. Exactly. Uh, and you can make this quite complex. Let's not have that much, perhaps. So now you have this little kind of wonky vibrato in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, you can make those bipolar too, should you want to. Uh, but it's really nice to be able to uh, sync them. So you can say this entire segment is going to be one quarter note long. Or it's going to be a bar. Yeah. And that's especially useful in the stepped mode. So I'll turn off one shot for now. And now this is a little step sequencer. So let's take it to... Uh, Let's change the pitch with it on a regular uh, FM operator instead. And I'm going to utilize the step mode we talked about before, so it can't get inharmonic right. uh, overtones. And I'm going to just use this to sequence the frequency. Uh, I'll start off with the click. So you can hear it changing the pitch. And you don't have to have this intense yeah, right. modulation. <laughs> there you go. There's so a very, that's a very really... major resolution there. I know. <laughs> People were saying, ah, it's classic Matthias C minor, which is always true. So I went C major. <laughs> that's very good. Uh, but this is a really fun way to step through wavetables and to, uh, you know, change the pitches. If I put this in linear, it gets way wonkier, of course. Which can be nice at lower modulation levels. But generally, you want this in fade or stepped mode. It's cool because, they, you know, these sort of bubbling sounds, there's ways to do this in um, subtractive synthesizers as well. But this is such a mm. simple way to sort of leverage the FM nature of... of Yeah, it becomes really fun with, with the modulator. You can do it on a filter here too or a wavetable. But when it's in the actual frequency modulation, it, it, it adds a certain something that I think is cool. Right. Uh, Another nice thing you can do with this for if you want to get really complex, we had some people, uh, I think, in on KVR, among other places, asking about how you could recreate uh, DX7 patches. So one of the design goals was to not recreate the DX7 patches <laughs> just up front. Uh, it, it's a great old synth, but there are a lot of alternatives, and it's been done a lot of times. We right. want to make something new. But they had very special envelopes. Uh, using curves, you can make envelopes similar to those, but you can also modulate the envelopes on the operators. So this is like super nerdy and you don't need to think too much about it. But I can set up stuff like this and say curve one is going to change, um, you know, the, the, the K of the first one at these points. So you can have this thing that in time, it goes to a certain level uh, and then the K is high and then the K is low or sustain can change. So it's sustained at this note, but then it changes after a while because the curve has reached another uh, level. It's kind of, it's a bit overkill, but you can make a lot of things happen with these curves as envelopes or envelope modulators if you want to get these really kind of complex moving things. Going. Yeah. Uh, you can also use them to trigger things. So if I just do a little wonk right here uh, I can use curve one to trigger an envelope gate and what does this mean well it means that when this one goes high it will start this envelope this oscillator right here uh, let's make that fast Hmm. 
So now you can manually say, restart this thing controlling the level. Which I think is a really cool thing. Yeah, yeah. And then you could... If you did it at a slower rate, you could effectively program sort of um, uh, like pattern trigger patterns. Yeah. You know, right, right, exactly. Almost, yeah. Uh, let's do an even slower. Rate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and maybe add some more here, and then turn on the clicking. Now, without here. counting these, are are there sixteen steps here that I'm seeing in the? Yeah, exactly. Okay. A very key modulation mood today. Yeah, right. <laughs> there's a there's a, some requests. I don't um, not to hijack you if you if you're headed somewhere, but um, mm -hmm. there've been a lot of requests, and Daniel's the latest one to. Uh, they really want to hear some FM bass examples, heavy bass. Um, yeah. And I don't. Sure. I, you probably don't have the whole patch catalog memorized, but <laughs> don't let I'm, that stop I'm you. Great that that either to design them. Uh, but uh, there is a pack already, uh, DMB basis. This is a, of, a reason plus they, sound pack. Yeah, exactly. I can just show you some of them, but they vary a lot. So what's interesting is some of them are hardly using any FM. So I showed you the uh, noisy neuro bass before, right? This is actually just uh, noise and two oscillators going into shaper. <laughs> There's quite a few of these patches that are that way, but there are also sub uh, sub bass patches. But some of these more kind of crazy. Oh yeah. This one is really only doing FM on one oscillator here, uh, and the rest are doing amplitude modulation or just. Big old waveforms. That's cool. That's a go. That just reminds me of stuff that Cookie Monster used to do. That kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, but what kind of the basis of of these patches tend to be that you find interesting overtones or kind of pitches that are high above your your bass frequency. Oh. And then, oh. And then you add that to the really low frequencies. So you have a low go boo, and then you go wee on top of that and kind of mix them together. In this case, he's using AM by connecting this high sound uh, into a low sound oscillator. See, I love, also... this is where I, I just get all into the, the educational nature of, mm -hmm. uh, if, I, if, I can, if I can sort of make a, uh, an unsolicited uh, reason plus pitch for a second. Well, I, the educational nature of getting sound packs and getting to reverse engineer what's going on there because yeah. I would have never thought that this big sound I'm hearing, this big deep sound I'm hearing is made um, from this, well, obviously the low part, but that there's a high component to it and that it's so right, critical right, right. to what it's doing, mm. you know? Yeah. And once you, once you unlock that, once you flip that switch in your brain, then you go, oh yeah, and then you, now you've got it going forward when you're designing your mm. own things. But that would have yeah. taken me a long time to come up with that. Yeah, that's a big difference where in Reason Plus it was really important for us to not give you a bunch of samples or something, right? Because right. For, first, everyone has a bunch of samples, but also samples are you get the sample, then you play back the sample, right? And, and maybe you do some tweaking, uh, but that's it. We wanted to make sure that you always got a fresh supply of patches because patches you can open, right. you can dissect, you can change, you can look into it, you can see what happens if I change this <laughs> to three instead of five, you know? Yeah, that's that's what I think is really valuable. Uh, but just to get back to this patch briefly, even though it's using AM here, you can of course do that oh. with FM too. <laughs> <laughs> and then you probably want a bit of a sub oscillator to have that low tone still there. So I just add a single lonely FM operator playing the root. <laughs> This, and then, this... of course, you want to use <laughs> some kind of LFO to change the level of this modulation. There's, a, there's funny comments Fantastic. coming in. Um, 
Bar Barisatvas. Barisatva says, can that be my alarm clock? Which, my God, totally. Um, <laughs> Elmar uh, says he had to turn down a subwoofer, which I don't blame you because uh, some of the stuff is getting yeah, deep. That, that's how it goes. Uh, but it's kind of, this is the basis of doing those kind of really growly patches is finding some kind of modulation that works and then using LFOs or movement to modulate uh, the intensity of the modulation. So setting the level middle and having a bit oh, of an Oh God, I love it. And if you want to scale that LFO with a curve, this is one of my favorite things to do. Uh, in the mod matrix, scale means, uh, sure, do this. Send LFO to level four with an amount of 50, but do it as much as this curve says. <laughs> so full at the beginning and then less. Yeah. Oh! So now you're getting that wobble in the beginning. Maybe it's wrong right? to say, but I think of it as like an attack envelope for just the modulation element of the... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wow. I think that's a, that's a, that's a good way to think about it. Find cool frequency combinations, make sure you have a sub-oscillator so you have that low end, and then modulate that. Wow, that's a cool one. Because that is actually, you know, one of the things I find. So with, I'm, I'm similar to you in that I'm not good at designing these sounds, but they're fun to, to use. Um, mm -hmm. But one of the things I find somewhat frustrating sometimes in these sounds is that they require, in order to work at all, they require automation. You can't just yeah, play right, them. Right, right. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that's a classic one where if you've got something that's moving like that constantly... Mm. you would normally have to go, okay, I'm, I'll go in and I'll automate that away so it doesn't just yeah, yeah, become yeah. annoying. But it, to bake it into the patch makes it a really playable version of that. Yeah, yeah, but of course you can also always do, I have this, but I want it during my song in some points to go. You can always just edit automation for that, right? And, sure. And draw in a clip and go, okay, it should go up here in the beginning. And then it should go, oops. It should probably go down and up and down and up and then way down and then up right so what happens with, if i play this so that's kind of how you would do it if you want this like really controlled yeah modulation right? and that ultimately when, when you, you get into the, everything to happen when you get into making music with it that is what yeah you'll start that's the the sort of really persnickety detail oriented stuff we all get into as as music makers and producers yeah right that's a fun envelope uh, so so that's another way to do it of course totally totally um i'm gonna i'm, I'm just looking at uh, the comments here to see yeah yeah, um, yeah. me too Daniel asks, how many oscillators does algorithm have built into it? Um, I, uh, does, I assume that means oscillator types. Yeah, so it's always nine slots, and the FM operator is always a sine wave. Uh, the oscillator in noise has uh, these many. <laughs> I think it's 20 wavetables. Uh, and in these, you'll find several normal waveforms too. So triangle saw will morph between a triangular saw. Uh, pulse width is a square wave, pulse width modulated, and so on. And these are more traditional wave tables. You have some other ones here, like uh, this one goes from a sine wave to a triangle wave to a synced triangle. So uh, there's a, there's a, quite a few to choose from. Mm. What we found is that uh, more wasn't necessarily better in this in this case, because FM is already you can do so much and it gets so complex. And the differences in the overtones. Uh, depending on your wavetable, we're, we're not that big, really. You would get like a pleasing wavetable generally has a bunch of overtones and they're not too dissimilar. So uh, we kind of went in a way where there was enough to be super interesting and keep it going for years, but it wasn't a long list you had to go through forever. Right, right. right. That is one of the, uh, and I, you know, my hat's off to you guys that design these things that like knowing when to stop Oh, is, that's the hardest part. Yeah. I mean, you can always, always add more stuff, add more stuff, add more stuff. But eventually that it makes the synth worse, right? Right. P part of our favorite synthesizers in history, I'm, I'm thinking about, I have at least three versions of the SH-101 in this room with me right now. <laughs> uh, and that is 
just the simplest synth, right? Mm. And that's what makes it so great. It's really straightforward. The interface is really easy to use. It sounds great to play. You know, yeah, they could have added two more oscillators and, uh, you know, a digital thingy, but we like it because it is what it is. Right. Right. There's right. a bunch of those. Even in the soft synth world, one of the most classic VSTs of all time, Synth 1, it was similar in that way. And Subtractor 2, they were set in their features and those features made you do sounds in certain ways and you really liked it. Um, that's a personal preference. People like different things. I tend to be scared of anything that tries to do everything. Yeah. Because it just, it always feels like I'm using 10% of its power and I'm sitting there going, sawtooth to filter, <laughs> but it can do everything, right? <laughs> so I prefer an instrument with, with character, right? Where you learn to, you learn to know it and, and love it and use it and kind of right. use it for what it is. That's right. a, a, I won't speak for, for Ludde here, but it's a, a little bit of a design philosophy that our instruments have their identity. Right? One of the other they, interesting things, speaking of design philosophy, um, that I've seen people commenting about on the, the YouTube video and in, in forums and early reactions to algorithm is uh, it's a, the, those modules have a flat look to them, which is a, a departure from Reason's sort of long history hmm. of that very skeuomorphic uh, real world knob things. What was the discussion internally about moving into a flat design and right 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 does it does uh, it uh, is it the the first of a full shift into flat design or no no i wouldn't say that i, I can't speak for for andy on this uh he did a lot of the design and uh together with ludwig figured out a way to make it really work but part of it is to make sure that the that the section that you want to interact with is kind of feels uh different mm. feels like something oh, i want to go here and, and muck around right that it feels like, ah, this is an area, and then there are other areas. Uh, one visual thing that's hard in any kind of big synth instrument design is uh, letting people's eyes get to the important part. Mm -hmm. If Imagine, if you will, <laughs> a world. You know, imagine <laughs> if every, every rotary, every knob on this synth, even every fader was exchanged for the rotaries you see on the reverb here. Suddenly, it would be really hard to make a distinction in your brain what does what because yeah. they all look exactly the same they right. just sit in different places on the panel uh, so in this case like making the level uh, this kind of growing knob that uh, makes it seem really important and something you want to use which right is exactly the point because it's the most important parameter for fm modulation right i mean and it just makes sense to me because it, it is this it's it's a playground of different module types. It kind of needs to be. It, I look at it and I go, oh, it's an OLED di display. That's what that feels like to me when I look at it. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Uh, I also I mean, that, that's say, always been our, our cop out answer, right? So you can't have flat looking recently. Like, ah, ah, there are very modern displays on hardware. Right, nowadays. but it does. It does. It does feel like that, you know. And I have yeah. to say, what I love, maybe uh, not most of all, but. My favorite color combination is blue and orange for the dumbest reason. When I was a kid, I had a jacket. It was blue and orange. But if I turned it inside out, the lining was orange. And mm -hmm. so that was my beat it jacket, my Michael Jackson. Oh, so you could have two jackets. I, well, no, That's I just, great. I would put, I would turn it inside out and I'd wear it around and I would like, you know, feel like I was wearing Michael Jackson's beat it jacket. I looked like a weirdo <laughs> kid with an inside out jacket. <laughs> but anyway, I have such like childhood love of that blue and orange jacket that when yeah. I see this, I go like, oh. Yeah. It feels like uh, I love the inside out jackets. I was very, very close of buying close of. I was very, very close to uh -huh. buying uh, a jacket from a, a Japanese game company called Cave that make amazing uh, shoot 'em up games. Bullet hells, they're crazy. But they had this inside out jacket where the inside pattern was just this amazing pink bullet pattern from their craziest games. Uh -huh. and the other side was just a nice baseball jacket. It was like two hundred dollars, so I did not. Ah, oh, uh, treat yourself, I, Matthias. I, I wanted that inside-out jacket. This, this is a cool thing. <laughs> uh, who doesn't, right? It's a, it's yeah, going to be right. a new. The next crisscross is going to be uh, inside-out things. <laughs> yeah, inside-out jackets. <laughs> totally. Well, so now, what I I um I should ask you. You have you you had the presence of mind to sort of come up with some things that that you wanted to show people. Have we run your list? Uh, there's one thing left that. that uh, now that I run through everything else, it might not seem super fun, but I think it's important <laughs> to understand too. Uh, and so final gonna... thing, the pitch bend wheel. Let's talk about yeah, it. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about these rotaries here that kind of affect the whole patch 
and because they weren't covered in the tutorial and i think you know it, it's fair to give people a, a chance i was about to say uh, to know what they are uh, so the parameter offsets right they can they're kind of global macros almost they set uh, the fm amount and the decay release for all of the things here for all of it so if i set up a little patch that uh, 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 maybe it sounds like this. I'm just going to do bells for now because it's simplest for me to just set up really quickly. Okay, uh, simple little patch. What these do is basically say the FM amount, so how much modulation is coming from the top one to the bottom one in each of these cases, pull all of those up or down. That's really useful when you have a patch and you want to try what happens if you just go further with it, right? If you go, actually, if I just dial this back, it's less clicky. Nice. Or vice versa. Ah, it doesn't have enough of that metal kind of. Right. So you could effectively you could accomplish the same thing, but in a really tedious way. Yeah, by taking all the levels up or down. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which you don't want to do. And it's a great thing to automate too. So you can automate the entire kind of intensity of the frequency modulation. Right. Uh, the same goes for decay release. So I have this, but I want these bells to ring out more. If I pull this up. Oh, I've effectively okay. raised all the decay and the release. Or make it shorter. Oh. Oh, yeah, it got really organy all of a sudden, yeah. I know, right? <laughs> but you can find new patches that way by using these, and you can also route things to them. Uh, and then you also have the key scaling, uh, which I think the part, part of the DX7 was it had a quite a lot of kind of key scaling parameters. They were complex, a bit hard to understand. Sometimes they were super useful. Most of the times uh, it was enough to just go high keys, more FM or vice versa. Uh, that's what these do. They do the same thing as the parameter offset, but depending on where you're playing on the keyboard. So a typical thing would be, I'm gonna make the sound a little bit more pronounced here. So I have this uh, FM bell sound. But I want it to not ring out and be that sharp when I play high notes. Because uh, it becomes grating and annoying, right? Yeah. And I just pull down FM keyscape. Or up. Oh yeah, the, the, the inharmonic element gets accentuated. Yeah, exactly. So the further up the keyboard I play, the more FM is happening. Mm. I always like to roll off, roll off a bit of FM in the high end. Because the sine waves are kind of high enough to be piercing anyway. The same can go for envelope rate. So it rings out like this, but the higher I play. That is it cool. It rings out less in the high end, but a lot more in the low end. Right. And that's something you would use, for example, on a, a marimba or a real instrument where the smaller object you strike has less resonance and would ring out for a shorter time. Right. That makes sense. That totally makes sense. Um, <laughs> so, someone said, come on, Matthias, you can show the Valkyrie patch. I now. just was going to mention that one. Yeah. <laughs> Tim, we showed it uh, in the beginning, but, but maybe let's bring it back. One for a more second. time. One more time. So, Matthias, it's you a made, really simple patch. You designed this patch. Yes. So, yeah, it, I, I'll brag for you. It's the coolest pad sound I've heard in a long time. There's a, really, a question. Really straightforward. There's a question I want to answer just um, because uh, he's asked it a couple times, but I don't know <laughs> if we have the answer for him. Bidar asks, um, can someone tell me how uh, we can submit, or I guess he can submit, uh, patches for Reason Plus to be considered uh -huh. as a sound designer? Interesting. Yeah, I, I'm not sure I can answer that. Uh, uh, 
but I think the easiest way, I mean, we do, we do hire sound designers uh, for Reason Plus. Right. Uh, but the, is that right? something we, that's we, being done and handled by the Reason Plus team? Yeah, and that's uh, being handled by the Reason Plus team. You can uh, ping, uh, you can probably ping James Pember on Twitter uh, and just say you're interested and maybe he has a good email for you to email or uh, you can go through support and then forward it to the right place. This so, is actually, uh, there's uh, a... I have no better answer than that. that that's, but it's actually, there's a kind of funny good news element to uh, you and I having no good answer for this, which is that very often um, I find out there in the, in public, uh, when I talk to the public, there's this idea that like, if what whatever you and whatever we're focusing on is like the whole company is focusing on that thing, right? So mm -hmm. it's like if if Ryan stopped making videos, we'd have these feature requests done sooner. Like he'd be coding them or something. There's this sort of disconnect of like you know uh, ambidextrous things going on. With there's a team that's working on Reason Plus, and and you don't know the answer because you're working on other things yeah, as yeah, well. Right. You know, yeah. um, so like, companies do do very a lot of different things all the time, right? Yeah, it's yeah. always. Uh, tricky to keep track <laughs> um uh, i think i just one thing i want to mention before we kind of leave this is uh, I, I make a big deal out of it uh, algorithm being kind of going beyond what the traditional fm synth does because i think that's the interesting part i think that's the important part and that, that will lead you to new sounds and new music and new inspiration and that's what we're going for but it does do classic stuff too right so there are a couple of patches in there that really emulate the old. Yeah. There is the a old song... kind of cheesy sounds. Yeah, but th those could be so cool. There's a, this song. There's this artist named Starcadian, and um, he did this song. One of his early songs that he did was uh, I, th I think I think might have just been called Heart, but it's got this beautiful FM sort of roads thing in it and mm. like when you play like when you do it like that and you play those sort of blues licks it's like yeah, yeah. that becomes sort of like the the doogie hauser theme song or or <laughs> law and order or whatever but but when you play in a soulful way it actually is still there's a reason it's a good sound a useful sound you know yeah you can always kind of even shape these old songs to like yeah to sit more in a mix right add a resonator and some eq And it doesn't feel that old anymore. Right. You know, you add a bit of the distortion trick. And now we're in lo-fi land instead, right? Right. We even just uh, reduce some of the modulation of these kind of... Or take up the decay and release. I'm getting shades of um, Radiohead, uh, everything yeah. in the right place, you know? Yes, that was exactly what I was playing. But I think. Oh, were you actually playing it? Oh, well, then that's why. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go, yeah. Um, I think they only use sine wave for a big yeah, part so. of their right, sound. Right. <laughs> so you've got that too. Um, there's a question that I've seen uh, from Navi Retlev a couple times. I want to throw it out there. Um, hopefully, it's not sidetracking you to a, a big diversion. He says, can you show us some use for amplitude modulation, oscillator feedback loops, feedback uh -huh. synthesis, he calls it. I don't think I can. Uh, and part of that is that the feedback in this synth is adapted to use in the FM operator. So uh, only the FM operators, uh, should we say, respond well or expectedly to feedback <laughs> of this uh, uh, built-in, uh, uh, there, there's almost virtually no latency and the feedback sounds really good that's not the case for everything else so feedbacking a, an oscillator to itself uh, will actually result in wonky stuff let's let's try it doesn't actually do much right oh yeah it's real subtle yeah yeah because it's ampli amplitude modulating itself and amplitude modulation doesn't really lend itself to feedback I think maybe we could do it through like a, a filter somehow. Maybe that's different. Mm. But as you can see, there, yeah. there's not a lot of stuff happening. Uh, right. 
Is that a thing? So, so uh, Thor has a more traditional amplitude modulation method, right? Would that something you could do with Thor and a sort of self-feedback amplitude there's modulation? There's a bunch of feedback routings you can do in Thor, but feedback is tricky, especially in, in software, because uh, it's now this gets super technical and I'm not the one to talk about it, but we, you need to render everything that happens in order, even though the order is so short you don't notice it, it's a couple of frames. Uh, you still need to do it in a certain order. With feedback, you need to render one thing, render another thing, but that affects the first thing that right. you already rendered. Right. So then you need to process that and it, it becomes a delay, right? And that means feedback can be kind of tricky to, to make good. And that's why the FM operators are a, a bit special to kind of make that really work. Gotcha. Gotcha. Interesting. Yeah, that's the, uh, the old hardware is signals are traveling at near the speed yeah, of light right. you know yeah so one, one of the things i actually i i very very seldom say that analog is better than digital because nowadays it isn't but the one thing i do only use analog stuff for is just feedback and feedback mixing and uh, routing you know noise into itself and, and stuff like that just the ground noise or the hum that could be really cool but it's uh, kind of an analog thing Right. There are more f feedback tricks you can do inside algorithm too, but I recommend you, yeah, explore some of them. Most of it will be best with FM operators. So I think try that. Gotcha. Gotcha. Hmm? Cool. Well, I'm scanning the comments here, but I think we're probably at a good place to um, let you have your evening, make yourself a, a hot ah. chocolate, tuck into bed, pet your hairless mm. cat. Get all cozy. <laughs> Um, but, uh, Matthias, thank you so much for joining us here. I think I thank speak for you. everyone. Thanks, thanks everyone who's watching. I gotta it's say, great like, to see a lot of people. if people don't fully appreciate this, you know, when I make a tutorial video, I sit and think for a day. I write for two days. I, I craft it so that I can make sure that I'm saying it in the right way and that I understand it correctly. Then I run it by Matthias and Ludwig and people like that to make sure I'm technically correct. Matthias does all this on the fly. He just, we turn on the camera and he just drops more knowledge in an hour and a half here, like just riffing like, like bebop. And, but that's why it's disorganized. <laughs> but it's amazing to watch the way you break this stuff down. I think it's true. Uh, people in the comments are, are seeing are, and are saying this as well, that you're, you're really, you do such a good job of uh, Thank you. letting them know kind of these intricate things, these very, very intricate details of complex things that don't need to be complex once you understand them so mm. yeah well, that's good to hear i, I think uh, yeah this synth is it's really fun and while there are a lot of things to understand and a, a lot of value in in tutorials and checking the manual it's also one of those synths where you can really kind of experiment because it has this open architecture where you put stuff in and route them around and see what happens right change change the level and frequency just by changing level frequency and the envelopes and how they're routed, you, you have so, 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 so many sounds, uh, even if you have no idea what you're doing, really. Yeah, yeah. And I think that that's part of the, of the fun. I think a lot of synths don't let you do that in the same way. So I really, I really like it. It is, it is the most playful synth I've experienced in years. I am such a fan. I can't stop saying it. And I know it makes me sound like a shill, but I am so excited by it. <laughs> I can't take it. It's just such a clever synth. Uh, Mark is asking, Ryan, what is in the mug? And he's been asking all stream. Mark, I'm going to disappoint you. It is water. I drink water during the live streams. In fact, I have a little bit. You still see it in there. Nice, clear little water. But uh, Water. Yeah, exactly. It's vodka. Okay, fine. <laughs> I might as well admit it on the stream. I have a massive drinking problem. Um, well, yeah, so, you know, the usual uh, wrap-up stuff going on here. People are uh, sending you their thanks and their appreciation, absolutely. David Agenda says, this was great, guys. I agree, it was great. I hope people got some ideas, and I hope people uh, are going to mess around with algorithm if they yeah, haven't. Yeah, try you know, it out. I mean, it, it's yeah. available in the, in the shop to try or buy or rent to own, and it's also included with Reason Plus for every subscriber. Got it day one, including some packs, so... Whichever way you want to grab it and try right. it. And for those that want to trial, they, they could trial either trial it via the shop to trial just um, algorithm. Or if they haven't yeah. tried Reason Plus, they could try Reason Plus. Yeah, them. right. They'll yeah, get if algorithm. you haven't tried Friction or Pattern Mutate or anything. Just yeah, just go then go, go crazy. But then you'll also get like some of those algorithm uh, sound packs that uh, are in Reason Plus as well to kind of check those out as well. So, uh, cool. Well, listen, Matthias, 
thank you very much. Everybody out there, thank you very much for watching and hanging with us. It's been really fun to have everybody here. And we'll see you soon again with more Yay. TBD, I guess, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. See you, Matthias. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye.